It's time to say goodbye. I know. I know a lot of you, okay, maybe a couple dozen of you out there are probably sad to hear that, but I've got two goodbyes to say and a hello. So stick around. Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Now, I apologize before I get too deep into this video. If some of you feel like you've been a little bit cheated hitting an eight iron here, if some of you feel a little bit cheated maybe by the thumbnail of the title, it was not my intention to create anything that was going to be considered clickbait because I have two legitimate goodbyes. I'm trying to knock this down a little bit and flight it down. Yeah, that came out lower. Yeah, 75 feet. That definitely knocked it down. That's pretty good. The first goodbye I've got is to 2022. This has been a fantastic year for the channel. And thank each and every one of you out there that has been a subscriber to the channel and the support that I get from all of you throughout the course of this year, the channel has grown. I feel like I've made some improvements to the quality of my videos and maybe the content. I hope that a lot of you out there are as pleased with the progress that we've made in 2022 as I am with the channel. And I look forward to a great 2023, which brings me to my hello, because the next video that comes out will be the first video in the year 2023. And it's going to start a brand new chapter. So we say hello to 2023, and I'm going to get into the second goodbye here in just a minute. Some of the other changes on my channel are going to come in the form of my clubs, my setup, my bag, etc. Uh, in my hand, I have my six and my seven iron and my Tommy Armor 845 two piece hollow body construction irons that I got at Golf Galaxy a while back. I did a review of these clubs on my channel and I've really, really enjoyed playing these. They've been a great set of irons, possibly the best set of irons I've ever played with. Now, Along with that, I will say this, I have a problem with my set of irons. This may not be a problem that everybody has, but I am willing to bet that this is a fairly common problem in a lot of amateurs' bags. I'm gonna start with the six iron here. I'm gonna try and hit a shot for you. I'm gonna see if I can alternate between six, then seven, then six, then seven. And I wanna take note of the, uh, the yardages on these clubs, and I'll try and explain a little bit about what I think might be happening. All right, that's okay. That's a that's a, a decently struck shot. It's not my best, but we're we're amateurs here. I'm not a pro, so that's that's fine because you need to be able to take the good with the bad and see what you end up with. So we've got 174 carry, 189 total distance for that. All right, now I'm going to the seven iron, and let's see what we get here. All right, I blocked that one right, but it's not a bad strike. It's an okay strike. Uh, I blocked it out to the right. So let's see what we end up with here. Uh, 158 carry and 166 total. Now, the total distance of that 7 iron as compared to the 6 iron, if I do a little quick math, 189 minus 166 is 23 yards. Neither one of those were perfect, but again, we're amateurs. We need that forgiveness. So a difference of 23 yards between a six and a seven iron, in case you don't know, that's too much. Yeah, solidly struck, drawing back toward the center. Again, 175 carry, 189 total distance. That's, that's, that's decent, decent strike. 155 carry, 165 total distance. So once again, we're up over 20 yards between my six iron and my seven iron. That is far too big of a gap. And it's not the only two clubs in my bag that it's happening with. I find that my six iron and my seven iron have such a gap between them that it makes my seven iron and my eight iron really not that different at all. They're fairly close together in yardages. And then when you go to the five iron and the six iron, honestly, a lot of times I can hit the six iron further than I can hit the five, but they're usually pretty equal 
whereas the five iron should be probably about 12, 13 yards further in total distance or carry or whichever one of those you want to measure. So what is causing that? Well, unfortunately, typically what causes that is the quality control of clubs. Now, if you're talking about forged irons and you've played them for a while, they can actually work themselves out of calibration after you've bashed on them you know, a thousand times. Sometimes those loft and lie angles can change a little bit, but these being cast clubs that are not necessarily as pliable and workable uh, to adjust as a forged blade or a forged iron, these shouldn't have that much movement. So I think this comes down to a quality control issue. The other problem that I have with these being cast clubs is you cannot adjust them very much at all. You can sometimes get a little bit of movement out of it. If you take it to somebody to put it into a loft and lie machine, they might be able to move it, you know, fractional amounts. However, with the amount that these would need to be moved to get them all back to be properly gapped, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm going to have to, to upgrade my set basically to a new set of irons. So that is coming in 2023. Here's another one that's coming. This hot mess right here. I've got two, I would say, completely different drivers. Okay. I've got the M2 in a 10 and a half degree with a stiff Proforce V2 UST shaft. And then I've got the Bomb Tech that I was trying out in a nine degree, 450 cc head, so 10 cc's less than this, uh, with a Bomb Tech Golf. It says stiff flex shaft in it. However, this is much more like a regular flex shaft. Now, here is the problem with driver for me. Neither one of these, neither one of these allow me to get my spin rates down below 4,500 RPM. Now, if you know anything about drivers and some of the latest stuff that they're telling us because of these simulators and the numbers that they give us and the accuracy of the readings and the measurements and the data that they kick out, you know that spin rates can make a huge difference in distances. Now, I've got a three hybrid and a three wood in my bag. The three hybrid, generally speaking, I hit out there about 215, maybe 220. The three wood, I can kick out to about 230, 235. So what should the driver be at? Probably around a 255, 265 range. Uh -uh, wrong, incorrect. It will spit out about the same distance as my three wood and sometimes even less than my three wood. So what's the problem? Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to get some professional help and I don't mean Sigmund Freud. What I mean is I think I'm going to have to go and get properly fitted for a driver. I don't think I have the wherewithal to be able to come up with the combination of head and the settings in the head and then the shaft itself and create the perfect combination on my own through trial and error to get a driver that's going to finally take my spin rates from 4,500 RPMs down to where they need to be at my swing speed, which is about 2,500 RPMs, which would probably give me about an extra 20 yards, maybe a little more at my swing speed and distance without changing my swing at all. I need that distance. I'm giving that distance away. So another item on the list for this year is going to be to get custom fit for a driver and let the professionals, the experts, dial in the driver for me and finally get me some of the yards that I've been giving away now for well over two years. Now it's on to the second goodbye as promised, which I guess could technically be also listed in tandem as the second hello. Uh, and if you include the goodbye to the clubs, that might be two more goodbyes. You know, I'm really, I'm, I'm starting to get lost. I'm confusing myself. Let, let, let's just try and make this simple. We are saying goodbye to the old golf test dummy. And we are saying hello to the new. Now, what do I mean by that? This channel for the last three and a half years, in March will be four years, has been all about trying to seek out and find the best methods out there that I felt made the golf swing much simpler and much more digestible for us as amateur golfers. The outliers, the renegades, the, the, the people that were teaching those fringy type of golf methods and swings because I've tried conventional golf for years and I've seen a lot of you out there struggle with conventional golf for years. Uh, by the way, that was a 170 yard eight iron. That's pretty good. I might be on the right track. But this year, 
is going to be all about trying to draw from the experiences that I've had in my golfing life and see if I've learned anything and apply it in such a way that I develop my personal golf swing. Not anybody else's. Not any other method that somebody else has come up with. I'm not saying I won't have drills that I'll go through and perform. Uh, and I'm not saying that everything that I do is not going to have inspiration from some of those other methods that I've tried. After all, I have reviewed what I would consider to be some fantastic coaches' teachings out there. Marcus Edblad, Gary Edwin, Jim Venetos, Sean Clement, Mo Norman. It just goes on and on. So I'm not saying that my swing, when I find it, won't have elements of that in it. I think it's going to be impossible for my swing to not have elements of those in it because I've been influenced so heavily by those different coaches and those swing methods. But I think it's going to be more about trying to determine what I have at my core and trying to make it super simple for me and then sticking with it rather than making myself a test dummy and a canary in the coal mine rather than all of that stuff and putting myself through the ring or changing all the time. I want to find my method and I want to stick with it for a while to see just how good I can get with it. That's a solidly struck shot. That's going to travel a ways. I'm down to the eight iron, by the way. I think that's almost out to 175 yards total, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, carry 162, total distance 173. So I'm going to work on that, and I'm going to hone my personal swing, and I'm going to invite you along with me. I'm going to have some course vlogs. I'm going to have some work out here. I'm going to go back to the short game areas. I'm going to be working on putting. My ultimate goal is to try and get myself to a place to where not only you out there, but me, myself, when I watch my golf, I go, you know what? I'm a pretty skilled golfer because right now, I got to be honest, I don't feel that way. Maybe a lot of you out there don't feel that way about me either, but I've torn apart my swing and rebuilt it a trillion times over the course of the last few years. And I've often said that that is such a bad way to go about trying to play golf. So I've put myself through it for your benefit <laughs> and for your entertainment. And now I think it's time for me to get a little bit selfish and to try and achieve the, the tallest heights that I can with my golf game at my age, with the time and resources that I have available to me. I'm not going to be, you know, on the pro tour, that's for sure. Uh, scratch may even be out of reach, but I think a low single digit handicap skilled golf level is something that is very achievable for me. And that's what 2023 is going to be all about, uh, along with trying to find a little bit of distance with my driver that has eluded me for a couple of years. But listen, it's been a great 2022. I want to thank you guys for that. I hope you stick around with me for 2023. Thank you so much for your support. Happy New Year to all of you. And I'll see you January the 2nd.